Welcome back to episode number 11. We're back again. Another Friday. No, this is 11. Is it 11? We're not, not going to mess up the count two episodes in a row, guys. Alive? Like episode 11. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't even know what episode is. Oh my God, P. All right. All right, cool. Okay. Happy Friday, people. Episode 11, um, solid. Yeah, so this week, actually, and this is coming from a recommendation from one of our listeners. So we are listening to you guys, and we're taking on all of your suggestions and ideas. But this week, what we wanted to talk about is networking. Um, it's something that I have personally found very useful in my career and also my personal life. And I know examples of that within this group as well. So yeah, we're starting off talking about networking. And this week, we have a special uh, agenda. We won't be having a book recommendation this week, but just in respect of Nipsey Hussle, who you may or may not have heard of, is a rapper who unfortunately passed away in very tragic circumstances a few weeks ago. And we just wanted to use this as an opportunity to talk a bit about him, especially for listeners who may not be aware of him and his actions, both in music and outside of music. Um, and yeah, and just talk about his impact or lessons that he shared in his life. So yeah, episode 11, happy Friday. Guys, networking is a, is, a, is a word that we hear a lot. You hear even on Instagram, on YouTube, you, people like Ty Lopez making money from network marketing, all these things. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, but what, does, but what does networking actually mean? So what does it mean for you guys? Who wants to kick it off? Daniel, go on. I know you probably got some sort of quote or something, so... Yeah, yeah no, quick. I can see in your the reflection oh, yeah. of your glasses, Daniel, that you've got a massive cheat sheet in front of you, so... No, I've just got my WhatsApp open for the agenda. No, <laughs> <laughs> no Oli, I know you have a quote for this. Oli, you usually say, isn't your network your net worth? You see, you say that yeah, all I'm the time. i say that myself. Everyone, had, everyone probably had that down, written down somewhere. Yeah. Nah, no, I'll leave no, that no, for that, you. I, I don't like that quote, to me. I don't like that quote. Um... Networking to me is just just simply building uh, relationships with those from just building relationships with those from other people with other people. Yeah. Mm. Just building relationships. Like the four of us, this is a network. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes people overcomplicate it. Uh, you know, I think we'll discuss about tips and how, you know, some people aren't that natural person that wants to talk to people or be open or how to approach them. But it's just building relationships with people. And as you build more relationships, you have different networks, people with different specialisms and people that you can help as well as they can help you. Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, we're, as we get older, we sort of realize it's even more and more imperative to network and build relationships beyond uh, your, your circle of friends. And also not only in work, but also in places like love life and, and health. Um, mm, but I right. actually, but I actually um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the way she was that. Mm, but but what I wanted, love what I, wanted life. I wanted to ask you guys was um, we we know um, that networking is very important today. Why isn't why wasn't it something that we done a lot in the past? I disagree. Like I think we've all, or I could just speak for myself. I think we've all done networking in a certain aspect of our life because the way I think I think Daniel mentioned it. It's developing and maintaining some sort of connection. But I think the other aspect of it is where you have like a mutual benefit for that connection. Like networking can be just like, okay, I've got these group of friends that I like to play football with. That is a network. Maybe we haven't been networking to our full potential in terms of more in the entrepreneurial space when we were younger. Yeah. But there's totally like multiple ways of networking in different areas that you should network. I think we did it well in terms of networking in our course, because that's the reason why 100%. we got good grades at university. 100%. We, yeah. we, I, I would honestly say our friendship was first built on a mutual beneficial goal of passing this degree and gaining good grades. So we helped each other, revised together, networked together, brainstormed together, you know? So I think we did it when we were younger. It's just, Maybe we didn't do it more in the entrepreneurial space when we were at university. It was just more focusing on passing our degree. I think but, also just uh, just as as kids, sometimes we're going through a networking experiment, but through our parents as well. Like I always remember when I was younger in school, 
my my mum, if I wanted to go hang out with a particular friend, my mum would be like, no, you're not hanging out with him. Exactly. When I was, That's why I when raised I was, the question. Exactly. When I was younger, when I was younger, I never really understood why, because he seemed really cool and everything. But then the older I get, the more I realize that my mum was, and also my dad, they were using that as a tool to try and build a network around me of influences that they think would be good. And it's only something that when you look back now, you kind of realize in hindsight that that even... That is a form of networking where your parents are trying to keep you away from certain dangers and build relationships in school with kids that they hope have the same values and behaviors and are moving in the right, right, same direction anyway that you want to move into. For sure. It's like saying that like minded, like like minded group of people. Um, I think my mom always used to say is or not my mom, but people used to always say, like, if you want to tell what you're you are or what you're like, look at your closest Mm. four or five friends. And that Mm. will end up sort of indicating what your characteristics become because those are the people you hang out the most and you gain so much from. And do you guys all agree with that phrase? The the one, the phrase of you are the average of the five people? 100%. Yeah. Because we could look at us four. And they Mm. talk about also your network, was it your net worth is your network Mm. or the other way around? Um, I'm not going to lie. That's why I've been trying to upgrade and get new friends. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sure, I'm sure if, we, if we were to break down if we were to break down our numbers and our net worth i'm sure it would be very similar and, and somewhat in line or there wouldn't Let's be too it. much difference mm. you want to do you want to do on air that's it live live you want to do on air live that's but not but <laughs> he just no, got no, nervous he just got nervous for a second um agree with that you're show me your friends and i'll show you who you are because ultimately you just end up mirroring mirroring who you're around and who you spend the most of time most of time with. So I think so I think in summary, the way that I'm hearing it from you guys, so it's definitely around relationships, as as uh, Daniel was saying, and probably what Oli was saying. There's there, for some relationships, maybe there's a give and take aspect, um, or maybe there's just you just want to help out people and you just build a friendship, or maybe there's no um transaction in the friendship and you actually just enjoy each other's company and you think that person's growing in the same direction as you but is there is there any uh examples of networking moments that you guys can remember in your life that because i think we're always networking every day in work outside of work going out the weekend doing anything but are there any specific moments for you guys that have led to a step change impact in your lives Good question. Good question. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, probably the the one that pops up um, is probably work related, because in work, I think networking is a form of marketing and branding. So you're using the opportunity to um, to talk with people and explain to people what it is that you do. Um, and through that, I think where that made a difference was in the end, people talk and work gets around. Mm. And so if you share your story and, and what you're about and, and your ambition. Uh, if somebody lacks the sound of it, they're probably going to share it with somebody else. And then eventually it's probably going to, well, in our case at work, it sort of goes around to someone that can actually do something with that. And so I found quite a few opportunities coming through because somebody heard about us and our story and our name. And I think it came down from, from a, it came um, from a networking situation. So, um, yeah, networking from a marketing standpoint and branding. Mm. But for, for me, I've, I, I'm someone who loves always sharing or helping other people. If I know you're good at something, I'd always recommend you to someone. And I've done that in various forms the last couple of months. But also, I think one outside of... I, I'm, I was trying to think and wrestle one for a non-professional um, example. And, you know, many of you know that, you know, I like a, I, I like a drink or one or two, make a few cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sounds like you're about to... <laughs> It sounds yeah, like an AA it's meeting. It's you guys know I like a drink or two. You know I want to tell you my problems. No, it's, <laughs> it's something I like doing. So I was I was asked to do to make drinks um, at a birthday party, uh, um, the fifth fiftieth uh, birthday celebration. You know I was paid for it, and it was something I enjoyed doing. You know someone recommended me, and I went and I did that. But even uh, people that I know that do things well, whether it's photography. Uh, I know a few caterers and I got one of them to go to um, Facebook. We're looking for uh, a caterer for Afro-Caribbean food. And I said, you know, this person's really good. Reach out to them. So I put them in contact and yeah, they went to Facebook and catered for their event. And I always Mm -hmm. like helping promote other people. Only people that I know that provide a good service and I know I can trust because ultimately I'm putting my reputation on the line. Mm -hmm. So if I know you can deliver something well and deliver something of high standard, I'd always recommend you. And Mm -hmm. I think that's 
also a positive thing of networking because you can never know who you might reach based on your own network. For sure. And with the networking, it's always based on a common ground. There's always a common, there's a common ground that you have that you even start that kind of relationship off on a, on a good foot with. No, for sure. I think for mine, again, a non-work related one, I think we mentioned on the podcast before, Daniel and I are planning to go to South Africa to do volunteering. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I was out with a few American friends who were out just grabbing drinks and they're networking, meeting new people, met this one guy that works for an airline company. And he was saying, hey, you're, I was talking about my trip, planning to go to South Africa, gave me his business card and was like, hey, I'll sort out the flights for you. Just through that small networking or connection experience, um, he was able to book the flights for Daniel and I to go there at a great price. And also it allowed me not to have to pay for the flight in one lump sum. He was able mm-hmm. to do like installments and everything like that. So just that was an experience where I would say it opened a door or provided me some sort of access that I wouldn't have previously been able to get. And, you know, maybe you can give us a little upgrade, you know, business yeah, class yeah, yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Not business, but first that's, class. Yeah. Class. <laughs> Daniel only flies first class from what I hear. So. I know, I know. He's going to he's gonna leave me in economy whilst he's in first class. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I wish, I wish. With the cocktails. <laughs> But I think with the, especially with the networking, I think you guys touched upon the the personal stories. I think for me, probably similar to Babilo, if we think about when we joined the company, I remember at that stage, the floor that we were on, there were lots of different people from different nationalities, but probably the guy who was most senior on the floor was the one who actually took out the most time to talk with us, connect with us, invite us to go play football with him. I think just from building these common interests through that network, we were able to later on in the summer, secure a, a permanent position after the internship, which probably for us completely put us to a different path than if we didn't get that opportunity. So I think that shows, and I think the examples that you guys gave, that both professionally and personally, things can make a bigger diff- big difference. I think for me, the personal one is when I... So I'm someone who's quite social. I think you guys know. I like hanging around with friends from different... Yeah, I areas know. And just mixing <laughs> everything up from like school, college, university... So then when I moved to Japan for the first time, I moved there not knowing anyone. And everyone in my office, they were all a little bit older than me. So they already had families, they were married and stuff. So these aren't people who, after nine o'clock on Friday, want to go out and socialize. They're more, let's go home and spend time with the family. So after the first week of being in Tokyo, I realized, shit, I'm a very social person, but I don't know anyone in this city of like 18 to 20 million people. I had to really get out there and mingle and just go out and meet people. So I remember the first Friday night, I was tired as hell. Came home from work and thought, okay, so if you really want to meet people, you just need to go out there. So I actually went out on that first night on my own solo. Went to like a few different bars. You connect with a certain certain types of people who you are drawn to. And after doing that for five, six months, you end up finding the crowd that you really connect with, people who have similar interests, people who have who are doing very well professionally and personally as well. So it's just a case of putting yourself out there and trying to meet people. And if, in your, even if you're in situations where you're uncomfortable as hell or you don't know anyone and you're the only person in the room that's trying to be outgoing, I'd say to stick through it and it can make a big change both professionally and personally. What, what mindset would you guys say is the, the right mindset to adopt when going into networking opportunities? So do you go in there looking to... Uh, for a gain or benefit or have no expectations or try to achieve a win-win situation it, it, it depends because you can be going to a networking event with a with a clear intention for example say you're looking to change roles you're looking at you're at an industry event you want to network with the right people because you're looking for a career move you're going with a clear intention because you want something however there may be instances where you're networking but you're just conversing with someone and you may not need them right away. You just you just add them to your you know list of contacts or your to your network list. Mm. And you know it could it could be three months time or six months time thinking oh I need to do this oh yeah, I'm at X Y Z at this event. Let me hit them up. But one thing I would always say is when networking is always have business cards on you always. <laughs> even if you're not if, even if you're not in a company or an organization, you can get your own business cards made for a few pounds. <laughs> All it needs to have is your name, number, and email address. Simple as that. <laughs> We should because get those people get, get some take flight podcast business cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, but no, honestly speaking, everyone should have a business card, even if you're a university student, wherever it may be, 
have something with your name, email address, and your phone number if you want to give out your phone number and mm -hmm. if you've got a website, a website because often you're meeting tens or you know quite a few people at a networking event. People will never think, remember your name or you know what you said particularly well unless you said something very stupid or they really held on to something you said. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, well, one with that one, one, with that one, you know, you know, you just gotta, with that one, you got to be careful because she was listening, but she was well, those business card is for networking, not for going to clubs and giving like <laughs> giving <laughs> girls your number, <laughs> <laughs> giving girls your I'm, number I'm, like this my business card. Myself, if you follow Daniel's tip by the book, you basically find yourself in raves, clubs, giving. <laughs> <up> <laughs> <business> <laughs> <cards>. <laughs> I like. It. I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking about the right, the right, uh, the right setting. <laughs> But also, you know, giving that card, if you connect start with someone... Rate, start rating business cards. <laughs> <laughs> that inbox will get full. No, but um, when no, when you network and you have a conversation with someone, one rule my dad said to me is, within the next 48 hours, follow up with them by via email. Yes. Just to say, oh, it was good connecting with you. You know, this is my... You just say, this is my email address, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. At least you've had some communication within 48 hours because it's mm -hmm. so easy to forget people. The face, yeah. the name, what maybe at least just have that touching point and then yeah just move, to keep it moving from there that's true no so uh, leading on to that what other tips would you say are useful to keep in mind um let's let's paint a scenario that you walk into a, a large sort of workshop seminar and there's a there's a ton of people hundreds um what, what's the best way to sort sorry they're bunny hopping <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, a private no joke. A private joke. Before. It's not going to make sense. <laughs> well, how would you? How would you advise someone to sort of go about networking in, in a situation? And their person, like it's their first networking event. What should they do? Okay, I would, I would say, be relaxed because even if you don't go to, to be honest, if you don't go and talk to someone, someone's going to come and talk to you. Mm. Put it that way. Someone's going to, someone will talk to you. That's the thing. Because at a networking event, if you're standing by yourself, someone's naturally going to gravitate towards you. And just start talking to you. Yeah. And be authentic. I think that's the key part. Like for me, I think when you're in those big rooms, yeah, sometimes it might get a little daunting or nervous because you don't really know how to start the conversation. Uh, yeah. But know that the other person is probably feeling exactly the same. So just start by introducing yourself. Hi, my name is so-and-so. This is what I do. Oh, how did you hear about this event? Or how did you get here? And then just start working from there. Um, just try and be as authentic as possible. Try not to oversell or try and sell yourself. I always get frustrated where you talk to someone and, oh, in the first five minutes, they tell you everything they've done. Um, that's just me personally, my style not to see that. And then also listen. I think a lot of times people want to talk. You'll be surprised just by listening. You can sort of hear what their interests are and sort of piggyback off their interests. So... Yeah, just just one thing to add to that because that was uh, perfectly summarized. Um, a nice tip would be, I remember when I first started going to these networking events, is one person at a time, because you walk through these doors and you see a ton of people, and you, and immediately, you're it's now a, a daunting task to get around. I if can, you, I, if, well, you I can just, I can, just I can it. picture, I can picture a young Pablo Timbo, yeah. With an with a XXX suit. Express suit. Yeah, yeah. Blue That's what I'm thinking. The XXX suit. Blue cut jeans. Shiny shoes walking with some sort of briefcase. Yeah, cool. Briefcase, you know. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, no, it's, I, think, I think a good tip would be one person at a time. And I think with that, you event, you, what you find by the end of the night, you've actually got around and spoken to quite a few people. Um, so one, one person at a time works well. I, I tell you what, I've had a few awkward conversations or a few, net, a few awkward networking experiences. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've been at ones where you, I don't know if you've ever found it where you're in a, you're talking to a few people and someone, no, people are, people are in a group talking and then you just come and join them <laughs> and then you just stand there and you're thinking like, of course, someone introduced me or how, how do I break into that conversation? Yeah. That's, that's one awkward thing, but also... A few months ago, I was at a top law firm at a networking um, and a, an event with Sir Trevor McDonald. You're switching and... careers. Sorry? You're switching careers. <laughs> no, no, no. That's all, but that's the thing. I was at a law firm and every, it wasn't just people from that company, but, you know, uh, okay. their networks. And yeah. everyone was, you know, had a full background. So 
I'm talking there, like, you know, oh, hi, what do you do? And I don't do law. So even trying to have a conversation was like, was a bit difficult. Mm. So in those situations, you have to draw on something that might be exciting other than work or your kind of mm. profession. To have a conversation. It's so funny you say that, Daddy. I went to one with um, one other friend of mine whose uh, name's Daniel, by, and he does, um, he's a producer. So he invited me to this uh, random drinks with actors and actresses and stuff like that. And it was like, oh, that was the call. I, I could have been <laughs> very quickly. And it was like every conversation is, oh, so what do you do? Oh, yeah, I'm writing this play. Da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah, so I work in finance. And then all of a sudden, the conversation just turned the other way. <laughs> it was just, oh, so you're not a creative like us. So you had to basically, like Daniel mentioned, instead of me talking about work, I had to talk about other areas and other interests and other stuff that I've done or, um, Oh yeah, or we'll talk about Daniel, who's a producer. Oh yeah, I'm here. I saw Daniel's show about X, Y, Z. Just mm. to, and that's basically knowing your audience. I think that's the key thing: knowing mm. your audience, knowing what yeah. skills you have, and trying to navigate through it. Because I don't think anyone in that room wanted to know about anything to do with my finance and all of that auditing <laughs> background. <laughs> so, I think one 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 very simple thing is so is just to. Pavila is laughing. Um, one very, very simple and effective one as well is just smile. Mm. Even though it seems very, it seems very stupid, and Daniel's really forcing a massive smile right now that no one else can see. But if you're just naturally smiling, then people are more drawn to that than if if someone's kind of in the corner with closed body language, looking at the ground. They look like they don't want to be here. You're not going to want to gravitate towards that. But if you smile, very clearly introduce yourself um, and then be interested in what they're saying. I think Pabilo used a, a, a phrase a few episodes back where he was saying, Pabilo, correct me if I'm wrong, to be interesting, be, become be more, interested. Be more, yeah, to be more interested than interesting. Yeah, exactly. So I think people gravitate towards people who want to actually listen and are asking questions from a place of authenticity. So I think um, I think we've covered pretty much all the all the tips, right? Were you guys, this is more of a personal question. Do you guys think that you were born good networking? Good at networking or what, what happened? <laughs> or what happened? You need to post that picture on the, on the page. So the reason, the, reason, the reason why Shaw's laughing is because Daniel's just put a picture up of me. Where was I? In, in Hong Kong. That's Hong Kong. Uh, oh, Hong, it's Hong Kong. <laughs> But why, but why are you showing that picture? I don't understand why you're showing that picture. Because it's smiling. You have to smile. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. I understand that. But do you guys um, do you guys think that you are effective networkers from the start? So if if I was listening to this and I'm just not comfortable with networking, how how do I get to the stage where you guys are at? I, for, for me, it's putting yourself in a position where you're uncomfortable, but over time you become more comfortable, more confident, mm -hmm. and more effective. And mm -hmm. I started at an earlier stage where I decided to go to college where no one from my sixth form was going so i immersed myself in new surroundings new background new environment and i was forced to like when you were in japan you have mm. to build a new network mm -hmm. and similarly going into uh, university meeting new people but also not just staying with those like you on your course but speaking to others because mm. when you increase your network or increase the people you know you have a diverse set of opinions and different ideas and thoughts just than just the way you were thinking so I think it brings many more benefits than the initial discomfort that you may be faced with. Yeah. Um, I guess it, it, some part of it is about your personality style. Some people are introverts, extroverts. Um, I think it's more about doing what is comfortable for you. Um, mm -hmm. Like no one's asking you to be someone that you're not. It's just challenge you yourself to put yourself out there me personally i enjoy connecting with people just mm -hmm. because everyone the way i try to look at it is everyone has got a different life experience than you mm -hmm. so just that five ten minute conversation you can learn someone's different point of view outside of just the networking aspect of it but just learn someone's different um outlook of life and then you'll be surprised if you do have something in common or interest taking that somewhere else and then finding out, okay, that person can also help with X, Y, and Z. Um, for my auditing days, I used to travel every four months. So I was forced to sort of meet new people. Um, and to be honest, it's been very beneficial because in most countries that I can travel to, I can pick up the phone and call someone and they can help me with X, Y, and Z. So, mm -hmm. but the key thing is just about take it slowly. Um, take it one step at a time. 
um, I think she was been on a few speed dates and speed dating, so what? that might help. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm just a single guy trying to make it this world, man. <laughs> no, I'm playing. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, just take it one step at a time. All right, cool. PJ, anything, any other final tip to add? Um, oh, was that a final tip? Or was, was that a final yeah. tip? Okay, yeah. let me... Uh, that's not my final... I got something else that one. So I think Daniel t- talked about it, Pete, just before you go. But Daniel talked about <laughs> it. But I think it's one thing that you is really important. And I don't do a good job at this. So I just want to... I just want to make sure I mention this. I think, Daniel, you mentioned that you should follow up after every 48 hours. I would no, say... Follow, oh, f- no, no, not every four. Just follow up once. Within follow up, hours. yes. Follow up. Every, every four hours. Pick up some school cards. Some automated email. In case they don't... No, but no, I would that say... Inbox, that inbox is getting... <laughs> Bloody SMS email. But I would say... This is one thing that I don't do a good job. I say every sort of two or three months, I think you should sit down and ask someone that had this advice and go through your contact list. And just send a text message or a message to someone that you used to talk to. And that way you're keeping that network um, that network alive. Because I think sometimes in there's been roles that I've, or jobs that I've done a year, two years ago. And I haven't spoken to those people in a year, two years. And you'll be surprised down the line. You might be applying for your next job and that person might be recruiting. So I would say is after, if you haven't spoken to someone of, after a long period of time, someone that was part of your network sort of try and send a text message and not to get something from them, but just to check in. How are you? What you've been up to update them on your life? Because you might be able, you might be doing something and they might say, Oh shoot, I know someone that can use your skills or use your, um, use you at this particular time. And you can find a new network or beneficial, um, connection through that. So yeah, that's my final tip. Sorry, Pete. You're perfect. No, what's we'll summarize? I, I don't really have any more additional tips to provide. Sounds good. All right, cool. So before we get into the hot topic, I actually wanted to ask you guys a more of an opinion question. Because I know me and Pabila have spoken about this before. So I think we, we talked about the point about your four or five friends that are around you, your network determines your net worth, which is a bit of a strong statement. But how, how ruthless should one person be in terms of the people around them mm-hmm. and what they're bringing to the table? I remember a picture of two of you saying, if you don't bring anything, no, what, what was that picture? It was the two of you in a suit at the table with your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was some, some around. Was like, you don't, don't, expect, don't expect to see if you bring nothing to the table. Yeah, don't expect to see if you bring nothing to the table. Well, what's your, what's your, what, what is, I'm very interested in what your guys' opinion is on this. Because... Yeah, I have my opinion, and I know, know Pavile's opinion, but I'll be interested in what Daniel and Oli think. Can you repeat that again, please? So basically, you know the, the, <laughs> the famous phrase, Daniel's just trying to buy himself some more time. No, no, no I, I want to refresh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. so, so, there's, so there's a phrase of you, the, the five, four or five people that you are surrounded with in your life where you spend the most amount of time with, yeah. you are the average of, that, of those people. Yeah. So building on that, does that mean that you should be extremely ruthless about who you spend your time with and what activities you do with them? Or should you take a more balanced approach and not be so ruthless? Oli, you go first. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't go. No, it's cool. Um, I've got something, but... I'll... I think you... Okay, so it's the, w- it's the way you look at it. It's a tough question, but I'm going to be honest about it. So... Yeah. I believe, yes, you should be ruthless with your time and your energy and who you spend it and invest it in. Um, because in life, you I believe you only got, a, um, you don't have an infinite amount of energy. So, yes, mm-hmm. it's important the five people that you surround because if you allow negativity in, it mm-hmm. will start to corrupt you or you'll start thinking in a certain way. I found since I've surrounded myself with certain people, I've started to see a different world or what is achievable. But I don't, I think you've got to be careful because when people say who you surround or what they bring to the table, sometimes it, it doesn't need to be financial or business wise. Sometimes you might have a close friend of you that's not doing anything in the entrepreneurial space or whatever, but they bring a certain level of humility that you're like, mm. I love this person. Or I like the way that that person has got this level of humility. And yeah. then there's also the, the, the conflicting aspect of it for me is, I believe sometimes you're in someone's life to motivate them. 
Mm. So someone might not be at a stage right now to give you something or for you to gain or bring something to the table, but you might be in that person's life for them to say, oh, I like what so-and-so is doing. And that mm. can push them up to a point where it'll bring, it'll bring them um, along the journey or bring them to a place where they can potentially help more in the future. So it's conflicting for me. I think you just need to be careful how much time you spend. I'm not a fan of just canceling people and just cutting them out but mm. I do minimize the amount of energy I give to people if I mm -hmm. feel like they're draining or taking too much of my energy or positive outlook. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's sort of, I, know, I might not have answered your question. Um, no, I, say, I think yeah. actually based on your explanation, I'm definitely on your side of the camp, Olu. I think I'm definitely exactly the same, actually, exactly the same. But what about you, Daniel? I, I, I agree with you, Olu. There are, you know, there are two things that stand out to me when you say that. It's be careful the environment you choose for it will shape you be careful the company you keep for you'll become like them mm. but not just be i wouldn't say be ruthless but i'd say be careful with the amount with the amount of time and energy you spend with those people or that person mm. and like you said you could be in their life to motivate them and help them mm. and i something you should never do is never look down on someone unless you're trying to help them up because mm. you never know in life yeah. you may need them yeah, and true. even when it comes to where you the way you treat people don't at work i say hello to every hospitality staff member at the front desk i say exactly. hello to the security i say good morning to the security staff i treat them as i'd treat if i spoke to the ceo or any yeah. um any manager i always like to give them the respect that people deserve mm -hmm. and that's just something i like to do regardless of position title or age no i agree what about p what did p say because sometimes i get afraid that if i'm not on my a game <laughs> p will stop picking up my phone calls <laughs> Bro, that's exactly what's gonna happen. Right? <laughs> okay, so uh, in this episode, as Sheryl mentioned at the beginning, we're not going to have a book recommendation, but we're gonna talk about um, Nipsey Hussle, who was um, who tragically lost his life. But what we want to talk about is the key lessons learned and what the legacy he's left for many of us to take on and carry on. Though he lived a very different life so to speak in terms of the impact he had to this his community the impact he had around the world and we just want to talk about his life and what we can learn from it and how we can do things ourselves and impact one another and our communities and generations to come um he's i've only been listening to his music the last six months but he's someone that pabilo and a lot of my friends have been listening to for years so i've only been a fan for the last six months and from what i've seen he's He's just been a very inspiring artist. But I think probably it'd be cool for P to open up because I know you've been listening to him for like a long, long, long time. So what's your what's your take on the guy? Yeah, no, I mean, first of all, myself and my brothers were very saddened by um, the news. At, at one stage, Mikalo actually messaged me and says he feels like we've lost our cousin. Because mm -hmm. I think when someone passes, you really understand and realize the true value that they gave to you whilst they were here. And so from a music standpoint, I think he evolved very well. I think as many would agree that he, maybe his music in, back when he was doing mixtapes wasn't as strong as his music today. But a lot of people actually know him for beyond the music. So mm -hmm. what he preached from a, from a one and two, all these conversations were about um, personal development, forwarding yourself as a person, um, investing, um, business. And he had a very different perspective compared to most rappers and artists in the game. And I think, I think that's the biggest thing that people are taking away and why they feel the loss yeah. um, um, so heavy. So, and I think one of the things that resonated very well was he was very much someone that was a grassroots build up ourselves and we're playing the long game. So he said at one stage, I'm not in a rush, you know, everybody's running, 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 but we're going to take our time because we know, uh, we think we know what we're doing. So um but no very inspirational on many fronts um one thing he also said was the highest human act is to inspire and i think he'd done that um undoubtedly um but yeah just a just um a very i actually feel he was like a prophet in some regards um mm -hmm. but from a music standpoint inspiration and also when we look at when you delve into what he was doing outside of music it just it just sort of um highlighted more of what he was as a person yeah I'll I'll be, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I didn't really follow him that closely, and that's my honest that's my honest opinion. That's my um, my honest remark. Mm -hmm. But I do recall when his um, his his death was announced, 
and the amount of people you know social media has a big impact and influence these days but it wasn't just like a 24-hour thing where people say and make comments but it was it's still ongoing and going on now yeah and to me it just shows how much of an impact and influence he had on the lives of many around the world mm. Mm. and you know you just type in his name on in, uh, in a hashtag and something i was reading is and i'll share it is nipsey hustle was more to la than a rapper more to the world than just an entertainer he was change he was opportunity he was success he was hope he represented roses growing from concrete not just making it out the hood but putting back into the hood mm. making the struggle be beautiful i'm not going to lie tupac's death hurt but I was too young to grasp what it really meant to our communities. Yeah. Nipsey's death shattered my heart. How mm. can I be connected to someone I've never met? Simple, because I'm human. And it, it, the person goes on to say how he, they enter the same parking lot where um, Nipsey was um, killed, but people saying, don't look so sad. He would want you to be happy. He'd want you to love. Mm-hmm. And it just shows that the, the sheer impact that he had, it was just enormous. Yeah. And he was... And he was yeah. Like I think Daniel, I echo. So I didn't know as much about his music. I think I knew more about his interviews. So I would see quite a lot of interviews he had, like on the Breakfast Club and other places. And I think it ties great with what we've talked about in terms of networking, because he was someone that you can see by all the tributes that he built genuine connections. Like you saw certain people, like Gary V, put up like tribute video tribute videos about what he meant to the community and i think that just shows based on how much people have been mourning over the period of time what a special individual he was and i think after sort of he passed away i started going even deeper into what he was doing for the community and some of his philosophies and the way he was thinking and i think p you started mentioning around sort of having that long game like i think most of his mixtapes and stuff were called the marathon so he was trying to get in people's mindset. It's not about that quick win. It's about mm-hmm. building legacy for your family. And I feel like there's just so many gems and we're going to talk about it, but so many gems that he put in his lyrics and in a lot of the interviews that he did, which you can learn from. So yeah, yeah, that's what I... Yeah, and it was one, one thing that struck me um, also is when you looked at um, how social media has reacted, there hasn't been one negative um, comment around or... If only he was doing this, he wouldn't have died. If only he'd, it was, it's just been all positive. And um, he was one of the very few um, artists in the industry to actually give book recommendations to other artists. Mm. Um, also very much a student of the game. So he, would, he, would, he wouldn't be afraid to mention, say, a Master P or a Rick Ross, who he's learned the game from. So very humble in the way he, he approached um, himself, other people, um, and I, I don't think there was anyone that he didn't connect with. Um, and as we know, obviously, um, parts of America where there's it's a gang culture is very much, this is my crew and that's mm-hmm. yours. And I think he very much went beyond that. And so we can grow together. So, um, but I, I thought some of these um, businesses, moves and, and investments was actually very inspiring. Mm-hmm. And I think it starts with the actual business park or where he has his marathon store clothing line. So the story behind that was actually... His older brother um, was, they started off basically, let's say hustling outside of that particular area. And they went from hustling to that area to actually almost owning the entire business park. Um, they, many times they were shut down by the police. And at some point they said, okay, if we're, if we're gonna continue our endeavors, we actually have to be upstanding citizens, pay our taxes and actually own a store. So they've gone through the trials and tribulations and then they're now in a position where they're doing so much for the community. Uh, they're actually um, selling um, um, very well from, from a store standpoint but he was open up restaurants um, he had general stores so it was it was very inspiring and I think what, why I think many people were taken back was because he was just getting started yeah his, mm. his album was his album was great and we were looking forward to the second and third and he was literally just at the at the he was just getting started in business and investment I read there was one thing I read where he actually teamed up with DJ Khaled and other investors and they invested in a I think it was like a 160 room hotel in Santa Monica. So over the next 10 years, Nipsey Hussle would have been, I, I say like a, another form of Jay-Z, how we look at Jay-Z and what he's done in business. So that's why it really, really touches. And even with the Jay-Z part, you could see from the early days, people saw that, people like Jay-Z saw that. I know, and I think P, you mentioned that, that he was someone that would always recommend and tell people to read books. I know yeah. when he first came in the game, 
he was selling like his mixtapes for like a hundred dollars um, or a thousand dollars per mixtapes and it was his way of re like after you read about scarcity and they knowing that by creating scarcity you create a demand in them like all those things that he learned and i think jay-z was like someone that bought like 10 or a thousand he bought a hundred uh, he bought a uh, hundred like a yeah. thousand dollars yeah a thousand dollars so is jay-z probably saw that and was like okay cool this is a this is a kid that's different with a different set and different mindset yeah. than the rest of them so i think that was one area and lessons that i learned from him Another one I think P sort of talked about, it was like his view of never skipping the process. He was like, you need yeah. to understand and learn how to do everything yourself. He was like, anytime you skip a process, you're missing a lesson. So mm. and like us who are in our late 20s, and to be honest, a lot of times I think we're hard on ourselves. Like, why are we not there yet? Yeah. But it gives me an, a different level of reassurance to understand, no, this is a process, you know. Like mm. when we're looking at businesses or looking to purchase a property and everything, and we're like, okay, cool. We need to open an LLC. That's mm. a process you can't skip. Like you can mm. easily pay someone to do it and whatever, but it's understanding whatever the job is, as small it is, do that process, learn it. So that in the future, when you're running the whole, you understand all the different steps, all the different areas and you can delegate. Yeah. And, and I think another thing that comes to mind also is one thing he, he probably practiced and preached without even saying it was bet, was the slogan of bet on yourself. Mm. And so his entire career was very much, I mean, he says independent, but he had a very strong team that worked alongside him. Mm. But there were many times where he turned down um, major deals from record labels. And because he believed that if I continue doing it how we believe it's right, we'll eventually get to that point. And so it turned into a point where I think he got to a stage where many, many record labels were coming to him and saying, can we partner up? Can we do something in some fashion? Because they saw what he was doing. Mm. So um, he went up, he went about the business the right way. And I think, and I think um, even if you, if you, if you're not close to music in that sense, mm. there's so much that you can learn from him and about how he spoke um, mm. about wanting to advance yourself and, and just reach your potential. And he died, he died being independent. So he owns, all these masters yes, that's even, and very, that's a that's big that's a big deal because even now where you hear like okay his streams have gone up by 1000 percent, that's all, all he's going to his family that's going to his family yeah. so mm -hmm. it's that's the key what, but if we switch this up yeah and because i think one big thing he stood up he stood for was about community yeah. and giving back to community how does that impact you guys and also based on the tragic way he passed away or he was killed how what's your mentality also about community going back to the community and helping mm. so, yeah so i um i i actually think his work is a, is a friendly reminder to us all that we all have a responsibility especially when you've been given so much in your life to give back to your community in some shape way or form um and sometimes when in our in our careers when we're traveling around the world um we lose that touch we lose that connection and if I think about it, the easiest part, we, I mean, we, we've influenced many people and we've mentored many different types of students. But I think we, our easiest influence, our, our biggest influence are those that grew up in the same area as us. Mm. Um, so I actually think, you know, sort of revisiting sort of what he's done and the work he's done is a reminder to say, okay, Pabilo, how can you in some way, shape or form do something back home? Um, and I think, I think it's important. I think you need to because if you was to take your area where you grew up from, there's not that many people that perhaps were as successful in you in your own right. So I think it's a, it's a natural obligation to show mm. others. And, and it does make a difference. So it's, it's, uh, it's something for us to think about. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a reminder. It's a good reminder. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think just touching upon some of the topics we were talking about earlier in the episode about networking and the people who you surround yourself with. I think he really did. And it's, that's why it's so unbelievably tragic the circumstances in which he died and where he died. But he was someone who definitely had the money and success to spend way less time in the area that he grew up with, which is renowned for being a very tough area to to be born and raised. But he made a, a strong effort in giving back to the community, building his store there and spending time there to influence and help the people. So I think for me, it's very inspiring to see what he's done and the fact that he was really trying to to bring up the community and he's someone who could have just completely ran away with his wealth he had the cars he has a beautiful partner kids and everything but he did really want to continue um so for me it just inspires me 
initially it kind of put me off. I was thinking, wow, like you, you work that hard to give something back to then lose it like that. But I think that's just the emotional side of the reaction talking. And I think it just makes sense to continue pushing. And I think hopefully his death hasn't been in vain from all the tributes that we've seen, from all the nice messages that we've seen. The fact that we are, as a four, having this discussion shows that and it, his death has made an impact and his life will hopefully not be forgotten very quickly. Um, and his music will always continue to inspire people. And, yeah, and, and just probably the last point from my side is what I take away from it was, again, it's um, what, you saw was, what you saw was a human being that was able to have the, as much impact as he did in, the, in, the, in 33 years of life. And then it, it begs the question to ask yourself is, we don't, we, I'm not to get too spiritual, but we're, none of us know how long we're going to be around for. And we have to say to ourselves, are we doing the most that we can do with the mm. resources that we have? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if you, if, if no, we, that, that's, that's, that's not even being spiritual, that's just being real. That's just that's being, real. being real. But if, if today, if today, if today was all of our last days, would we be able to say we've had a similar impact to Nipsey Hussle on our own level? Um, and so I think it's, I think it's a lot about, about, you, looking at someone like a Nipsey Hussle and saying, okay, how much can I make happen in my lifetime so that um, when I pass, and I know I will pass, people can also be inspired? Because I think he's achieved what many strive to achieve, which is your name lives on, um, and many people are still inspired whether you're here or not here. So so that's um, that's what the biggest thing I take away from. No, sure, I would sure. say this is this this is like an alarm bell. It's just, it goes to show how myopic we are within our thinking. Mm. We often live a life that is very self, selfish, self-centered around what we can get out of life, what we can enjoy um, and how we can live a certain lifestyle, but not necessarily thinking about the impact or the legacy we're gonna leave behind, or even thinking that our life is a legacy because there are many people watching, but how do you necessarily impact generations to come? Like when we think about ourselves, do we know what our great, great grandparents did? Did they leave a legacy behind from you know from the life they lived? Well, our great great grandparents even know our first names, and that comes to the life we live on this earth, as Pabilo was saying. It's very short, but we have to be very conscious of yes, you want to enjoy your life, but also think gener generationally. Think about what you can do with the time you have, with the gifts and talents that you have, with the resources you have right now to make sure that your life is you know lived with purpose. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I just just one thing, just to add as well, is and this hasn't happened since 1970, I believe. But there was a march that was only open to um, the gangs of LA, and they came together and they actually signed like a a, a peace trust. Um, and I'm not too sure exactly what it entails, but this hasn't happened in so many years, and and it, it speaks again to what he was able to inspire and actually um, move and evoke within within people. So, it's it's the question we all have to ask ourselves is is are we doing enough with what we have mm. to inspire at our level, and if not, how can we do more? Um, because I think there's more within all of us. We we can we can always go the extra mile. We can still do what we're doing from a business investment standpoint, um, but also touching people in different ways that are non-financial mm. um, and he and he was also able to to do that so it's about having a great greater purpose yeah is mm. with everything that you're doing in the position you're in is what do you want to be remembered for because when you die people are not going to say hey yo p or whatever i had 20 million in the bank they won't care you can't yeah. take that anyway with you it's going to be the people you've touched the the way you've made people feel around you the people that you've helped um so yeah i think his life has to be more it's unfortunate the way he died but um there's some positive to take from it because of everything that we're seeing and uh, the way you got to see it is there's gonna it's gonna wake up a few other people with the same sort of mentality um and grow them so yeah that's what i got on my side but i think the only part and it's just me where it was like when it initially happened Part of me was like, okay, for it to happen in your own neighborhood mm. and where you're from, there was an element of fear for me because sometimes they say, okay, when you make it, you need to leave the hood sort of thing. And he was sort of completely opposite to it in terms of he would stay there and try and build people up. So I think my mentality is, yeah, for me, there's places I can go, places I can't go um, just because of my level of security that I want to make sure I have. But um, 
I always feel like, yeah, you need to give back, but also try to be safe when you're out there. And it's unfortunate because the way it happened for him wasn't because he was in the wrong place or doing something crazy. So it can happen at any time. But I think yeah. there's also an element that you need to just try and always be wearful of where you're going um, and where you're at. So, yeah. Perfect. So I think that's probably the a nice way to, to close the topic. Um, I definitely recommend everyone, if you haven't really heard much about him, p- plug his name into Google or Instagram and read some of the, the articles and stories uh, about Nipsey Hussle because he has really done a lot in a short, sh- unfortunately, short shorter life um, and starting with way less resources than um, a lot yeah. of a lot of us um and that's what so, you yeah, call that's... a true self-made you know when you hear like yeah. kylie and those people no nah, no nah, nah. this is someone that's actually truly self-made yeah so continuous prayers to him and his family i think we mentioned at the beginning of the discussion that tupac and biggie stuff i was way too young and other people probably all of us are way too young to really feel this one um but with nipsey hustle again i've only been listening to his music the last six months Pavilo a lot longer and you guys even less than me but his his passing has really made an impact. So yeah, prayers for his family. They're probably going through a lot right now. Um, but on the positives, he's really had a remarkable life in a very short time with way less resources. And he was seeing life as a marathon and still achieved a lot. So just carrying that lesson into our own lives, hopefully we can use the same drive and passion to achieve the maximum that we've been given the ability to achieve. So thank you for listening to uh, a different type of uh, episode, but we still hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any feedback, please comment on a photo, send us a DM on Instagram at Take Flight Podcast, or if you want and you're not on Instagram and you want to email us, the email address is takeflightpodcast at gmail.com. Peace. Perfect. Happy Friday, guys. Take off, take off.